Today I'm going to show you guys how to create this Andy Warhol inspired pop art piece using GIMP and a picture of a celebrity of your choice. This is the finished product and as most of you guys may know, pop art does use a lot of bright colors. So as you guys can see, I have tried to choose as many bright colors as I could to mimic the pop art style. So I'm going to go ahead and get started from the very beginning. The first thing that I did was found a picture of a celebrity. I decided to choose Beyonce. Now when you choose your picture, there are two things to consider. One, the picture of your celebrity needs to be a portrait, meaning it has to cut off at the shoulders. It's only the head and the shoulders. Do not choose a full body picture. The second thing you need to consider is that the background should be solid with a white or light background. So I thought this was a perfect picture as it is a solid white background and it's also a very clear picture of Beyonce that cuts off at the shoulders. The next thing that we need to do is to make this picture black and white. And to do that, you're gonna go up here to colors. You're gonna scroll down to threshold and just by clicking this button, it will automatically make your picture black and white. Looking at this window, you'll find a little black triangle. And if you drag it to the left or drag it to the right, uh, it will create a lighter or darker effect. So we're going to find a happy medium where it's lost some of its detail, but has just enough so that you can still tell who your celebrity is. And once you're satisfied, you're going to press OK. Now your picture looks more 2D and flat. The next thing we need to do is we need to make a document for our project. And to do that, we've got to do some measuring. So the first thing you need to do is go over to your toolbox and select the rectangle select tool. And then you're going to go to tool options. Make sure that the fixed box is checked. And what this does is it helps you create a perfect square. So once you've selected the rectangle select tool and you've checked your fixed box, you're going to move over to your picture and you're going to click and drag to create a square. Now this square should line up with the dots on the edge of your paper. Do not go over. You must line it up to those dots like so. And once you let go, you can hold the center of the box to move it. I'm going to try to make Beyonce's face the center of the box. The next thing you need to do is you need to go back to tool options and you're going to go down to size and find these two numbers, which should be the same as we did just create a perfect square. Your number is going to be different as your picture may be a different size from mine. Now, once you've found your number, you're going to pull out a calculator and you're going to plug in that number. So mine is 364 and you're going to multiply that number by three. And I will show you guys why we're doing this in a second. Now, my new number is 1092. And what we're going to do with this number is we are going to type this in as our measurement for our new document. So we're going to go back to GIMP. We're going to click File, New, and then I'm going to type in 1092 for both my width and my height. So what this does is it creates a bigger box than what we just made. Um, and we can fit nine of these little boxes onto this blank box here. Now, whenever I start a project, I immediately save. So we're going to go to file, save as I'm going to save under pictures. My students save under their numbers, but we all save it under our name and then pop art. So it's easier to find later. And then you're going to go ahead and click save. The next thing we need to do is put our celebrity picture onto our project. And to do that, all you're going to do is right click, edit, copy, and make sure that that box is still there when you copy it. Otherwise, it's going to copy the whole rectangle. And then you're going to move over to your blank document 
and you're going to right click, edit, paste. If you go over here to our layers, you'll see that it's still floating. So we need to create a new layer with it. There's two ways to do this. You can right click and choose to new layer, or you can actually just click the create new layer button right here. And what it does is it creates a layer for your picture. So now we're going to move this picture to the corner of our document. I'm going to select the move tool and then I'm going to click my picture and drag it to the corner of my page. Now what we need to do is we are going to cut out all of the white bits of our picture. So if I go ahead and close the eye for my background, you can see that there is a white background for my celebrity picture. So we're going to actually click this tool over here called the select by color tool. And what it does is exactly what it says. When you click on a certain color, it's going to select everything that is that color. And once you do that, all you have to do is right click, edit, and then cut and it will cut out all of the white parts of your picture. So you should only have the black stencil like part of your celebrity. Now to make these moving dots disappear, all I do is select the rectangle select tool and click anywhere outside of my document and it makes those dots disappear. So now you've got sort of a stencil of your picture. We now need to make multiple copies. As you can see, the final project has nine pictures. So we're going to make nine copies of our picture. To do that, you're going to highlight the layer that you want to copy. And then you're going to go down here where it says create a duplicate of the layer. And once you click it, it's going to make the exact same copy of the layer that you chose. And we need nine of these. So I'm at two right now. So I'm going to keep clicking until I've got nine. So now it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now that we've got nine layers, we need to spread them out across our entire document. I'm going to go back and select my move tool. And then I'm going to make sure that I click on the black part of my pictures. If I click on the white part, it's going to move my background and we do not want that. So once I click the black part of my picture, I'm just going to go ahead and move that second picture right next to the first one. Then I'm going to go back to my first picture again and then move that right next to the second one. And you're going to keep doing this until you filled out your entire document. And again, this is why we did some of that math earlier so that we could measure exactly what we needed to put exactly nine repeating pictures of our celebrity. Like so. So once you're finished with that, all we need to do is start adding the colors. I will be showing you how to do one of the pictures as all you're doing is repeating the same steps over again with different colors. So if you look at these pictures and you look at the individual um, pictures, you can see that there are three different colors for each. We've got our background color. So for this one, it's yellow. Uh, we had recolored the black bits of the picture. So I chose blue. And then we colored basically the inside, the skin and the hair, uh, which I chose pink. So we're going to start off with the background. Now, when you color the background, you are going to select the background layer. And then you're going to choose a color for your background. After that, you're going to go back to the toolbox and select the bucket fill tool. Actually, no, you're going to select the rectangle select tool. I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. You're going to click the corner of the picture and you're going to drag it so that it fits the picture exactly. Should be a perfect square. And then you're going to go ahead and choose the bucket fill tool. You're going to choose your first bright color. And then you're going to click inside the square to fill up that background. 
Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to find the layer that has that certain picture. To tell whether or not you're on the right layer, you can close the eyeball, and if it disappears, that means you're on the right layer. If you close this eyeball, it's shutting down the bottom right picture, and we do not want that one yet. So you're gonna choose the layer with that first picture. You're gonna go back to the color select or select by color tool, and this time you're gonna select the black part of the picture, and using your paintbrush tool, you're gonna select that, and you're gonna choose a different color. I'm gonna choose yellow. And with your paintbrush tool, all you need to do is color over the picture. And you do not have to worry about uh, coloring it in detail. As you can see, I'm moving my paintbrush all over the place and it's still only coloring where the black parts were. And that's because we used our select by color tool. Again, I'm gonna make the dots disappear by selecting my rectangle select tool and clicking anywhere outside of the document. And now I've got a blue background with a yellow sort of stencil. The last thing we need to do is we need to color the skin and the hair. To do that, I'm actually going to add a layer and I'm gonna label it color three just so I know that that's what that layer is for. It's gonna be above the background, but under all of the other layers. So now I'm gonna choose a final color. I'm gonna choose purple. And I find it helpful to choose this sort of rectangular paintbrush. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your paintbrush tool and you are gonna color the inside of your image. Now I'm gonna hold shift and plus to zoom in a little bit so I can be a little bit more accurate. Using my paintbrush, all I'm doing is holding my mouse and drawing the inside of my picture. Don't worry about going outside of the lines. I actually find this has a pretty cool effect. It looks a little bit more like it's uh, silk screened or printed, but you're just gonna fill in that entire inside until you've got your three colors. So now I've got my background blue color, I've got my yellow stencil color, and then I've got my purple skin and hair color. Now all you're gonna do is you're gonna repeat those steps with the rest of your pictures until you get your finished product like so. Now don't worry about using some multiple colors. As you can see, there were two times I used a yellow background and there were two times that I left my celebrity picture with the black stencil. So you are the artist, you get to choose what colors you would like to use for your project. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.